So last week we talked a little bit about Fedon's camp. So Fedon's camp is located in uh, the parish of St. John's. And this is just a map to show exactly where it's in. It's borderline between the St. John's Parish and the St. Andrew's Parish. Uh, it's located north of Mount Kwakwa. So any one of you who've been hiking up to Mount Kwakwa, just north of Mount Kwakwa, further up, is uh, Fedon's Camp. And Fedon's Camp was the, the camp of uh, Fedon, Julian Fedon and those who were fighting with him during the period of the Fedon's Rebellion. Um, hostages were, were taken, British hostages. At the time, Grenada was a British colony. Um, there were French colonists living in Grenada, people who are French origin, either they were born in France or born in French-speaking islands, such as Martinique and Guadeloupe and living in Grenada. So Julian Fedon was a, a French colonist. He had been born in Martinique, uh, so he was French and living in Grenada. So there were two sets of people living in Grenada. The British people who were either born in Grenada or they came from Britain and were residing in Grenada. So they were the British colonists and there were also the French colonists People who are either um, came from France directly or from the neighboring French-speaking islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe and were living in Grenada. So Fedon's camp was the location or the campsite for Julian Fedon and those who were supporting him in the rebellion. So those included both a mixture of slaves as well as free men. Um, other mulattoes like Julian Fedon who were free and were fed up with the, the inequal, inequal conditions under which they had to live in Grenada. They didn't have equal rights to, as, as the British colonists. Uh, so those people were also supporting Julian Fedon. So there was this campsite set up in the mountains, Fedon's camp. And that was the location of the campsite where all the forces who were fighting with Julian Fedon, they were located. They kept camp. They had all their food supplies there, their ammunition, everything like that. Um, British hostages that were taken um, either from the Grenville area or the Guave area were brought uh, to uh, fed on scamp. So many of them were executed at fed on scamp. Others were just uh, kept hostages um, and eventually let go. But the majority of them um, were executed there at uh, fed on scamp. Uh, today, if you make that hiking trip up to Mount Kwa Kwa and go up to fed on scamp, there's a monument that was erected in the 1970s. I have a picture later on to show you. You'll see that monument there that uh, it's at the very summit of the, the Fedon's um, camp. All right. So uh, Fedon's camp was a very important part of the Fedon's rebellion. And one of the reasons why the Fedon's rebellion was so successful Fedon had a dedicated camp in the mountains where he was able to mobilize forces and mobilize um, those who were fighting with him to attack uh, the British um, troops and the British um, colonists that were um, also fighting against uh, Julian Fedon. So that was the signature site, the Fedon's camp. So let's take a let's take in a view of what the the camp actually looks like. So, give me one moment. Let me just share another screen. And we could see a look of uh, Fedon's camp. Right, just want to ensure that I'm showing. So let's let's take it in. 
So this is a parent scam. So located the very north of the island is the pedal not the very north of the island but north of Mount Kua Kua. Um, so it's about 2,500 feet and that's how high is the, the location of the feather and scam today it's mostly like just bush uh, green um, forested areas no real evidence of the camp exists today but in that location there in the northern uh, northern peak of the, the island of Grenada is uh, the Pedant Camp. Our Pedant Camp was located in 1795. And uh, if you're hiking and you like to hike, you can get it from, um, you have to go past Mount Kwa Kwa and make the hike up to Pedant Camp, right? So it's a couple of hours to, uh, to do the hike. Um, Right, so that's that's a that's a fed on scam. So, uh, those who are adventurous and want to actually see it in real life, um, you can schedule a, a hiking tour with any one of the tours. People do tours and they can uh, take you up to fed on scam, and you can see what it looks like in in real life or in real time. Right, so that's the fed on scam. But today, today there is no real existence of the actual camp. It, uh, the whole area has been um, overgrown now with forested, a forested areas, trees, bush, etc. Um, but you can, you could definitely um, go out and check it out. So that was the the Fed and scam. Let's go back to our presentation here. So Fedant's camp, uh, it is believed that um, in 1795, between 1795 to 1796, because the Fedant's rebellion really lasted one year, like one year, like three months. It ended in June 1796, uh, that the population of uh, the Fedant's camp reached as much as 7,200 people were residing at Fedant's camp including both uh, slaves and whites. So it was estimated to be about as much as uh, 6,000 slaves took up refuge at uh, Fedon's camp as part of Julian Fedon's army to fight the British forces during Fedon Rebellion, as well as about 400 plus whites who were residing on the island who also was siding with um Julian Fedon and his cause um under the Fedon's rebellion. So that 
that's the estimate of the population of uh, Fedon's camp from 1795 to 1796. Uh, it was a campsite, so the campsite had food as well as um, ammunition. So the slaves, in terms of ammunition, the slaves had like cutlasses and pikes, which they used to, def to defend uh, their position against the British. And the whites had muskets. And there was also ammunition brought in from French neighboring islands, such as Matnik especially. Um, to increase the the strength of the forces under Julian Fedon. So the picture here, this is the the monument. So today, if you go to hike, go up to that hike at a Fedon's camp. This would be the monument that you will find at the very summit of a Fedon's camp, uh, and it says site of Fedon's camp, seventeen ninety five. So that's the monument that you will find located at the very summit or peak of uh, Fedon's camp. Um, it was installed, as I said, in the 1790s to mark the location of uh, Fedon's camp. Otherwise, as I said, it's overgrown by trees and bush and you wouldn't recognize it easily. But the monument there is a good landmark uh, in terms of where the, the, the site is believed to have been in 1795 and the expansive area. Fedon, uh, Julian Fedon, he was able to maintain the campsite for the duration of Fedon's rebellion, um, ensuring there was a supply of provisions, especially food and ammunition to keep the campsite going because it was the, the base of those of the troops, uh, the slaves and the whites who were fighting um, with Julian against the British forces. So the camp had to be maintained and ensuring food, of course, um, was there was important. Just a quick plug again and uh, ensure that you're following us on Facebook. If you are viewing by another streaming platform, um, check out our Facebook page, Island Learning Grenada, and follow our page or like our page. You can do both. You can like the page as well as you can follow the page, Island Learning Grenada, and um, stay connected to um, all that we post on our Facebook page by following us on Island Learning Grenada. So who was uh, supporting Fedon? So Fedon had some associates who were supporting him. Um, so there were these um, five gentlemen who were part of the, the leadership team, for lack of better words, um, under Julian Fedon, so we had Charles Noge. Um, he was a tailor by profession, and he joined Julian Fedon in the Fedon's Rebellion. We had Joachim Philip. He was like Julian Fedon. He was a free mulatto. He was also a landowner and owned a, a coffee estate. So Joachim Philip. He was the one mainly responsible for gathering of the forces in the Guave St. John's area. Um, so on the night of March 2nd, 1795, two attacks were launched, one in Grenville and one in Guave. The one in Guave was led by Joachim Philip um, as part of the start of the Fedon's Rebellion of 1795. We had Stanislaus Besson. He was a silversmith by profession. We had John Fedon. John Fedon was the brother of Julian Fedon. He was also a coffee estate owner. He owned a small coffee estate. And lastly, we had John Pierre La Lavalette. He was a tailor from Sotes in St. Patrick's. So those were the five um, gentlemen who were the associates or the colleagues of Julian Fedon and helped 
uh, Julian in the execution of the Fedon's Rebellion of 1795. Initial success. So the rebellion broke out on the night of March 2nd, 1795. By the morning of March 3rd, 1795, two major towns had been taken um, by siege, both Grenville and Guave. Uh, they were taken over by uh, Julian Fedon's forces. And that began the start of the Fedon's Rebellion. That rebellion will last until June 1796. So just about a year and um, three months that rebellion lasted. So the initial success. So the initial success of the Fedon's Rebellion was mainly driven by three, three reasons or three factors. One, um, weak British forces. So the British forces at the time were very weak. The British did not have a large number of troops on island at the time when the rebellion broke out. So they had a weak command to begin with. And then during that period of a year, um, the island of Grenada was plagued by a yellow fever. So yellow fever is now extinct. I don't think it has been centuries since there has been a breakout of yellow fever. But in the 1700s and even in the 1800s, yellow fever was a, a sickness or illness that plagued many of the persons who came from Europe um, and lived in Grenada. So it affected those who lived in Grenada, so those, even the slaves, um, those who were freed after 1838, and definitely the British and French colonists living in Grenada were affected by yellow fever. So in 1795 to 1796, the British forces were affected a lot by yellow fever. Many of them died um, because of yellow fever. So they had a weak force uh, to be able to com combat and uh, fight against Julian Fedon forces. Remember, he had about 6,000 slaves fighting for him. There are another almost 400 plus whites, then a few hundred free mulattoes, right? So uh, in total, almost close to an army of 7,000 forces, right? So it was a big group. And the British did not have that, have that manpower to be able to combat and beat um, Fedon's forces. And especially they were weakened by the presence of the yellow fever, which many of them died from. So that's the first reason why Julian Fedon was successful on the onset. It, it, there was a weak British presence on island. And this allowed him to gain lots of traction before the British could recoup and um, get reinforcements to be able to get hold of, of what was taking place in Grenada. Shortage of food. So food supply was very short. Um, Julian Fredon was able, because he owned a estate, and some of the colleagues that he had, such as his brother, John Fedon, and also Joachim Philip, they also owned estates. They managed to be able to keep their food supply so they could continue to feed the slaves, the whites, and the free mulattoes who were fighting under their troops or their forces. The British, on the other hand, they suffered immensely from shortage of food. Um, they couldn't get food into the island, and many of the British uh, troops died because they were unable to, to get enough food to keep them going. So the food shortage on the island impacted the British forces a lot, more than Julian Fedon's forces who were able to get resources from, you know, planting and the farming on their own estates to be able to keep them going. 
And the third reason for the initial success of the Fedon's Rebellion, it was driven by uh, the killing of the lieutenant governor. So a lieutenant governor was the position. Today we have the governor general. But before independence, uh, the British head of state represented in Grenada was called the lieutenant governor. So the lieutenant governor at the time during the Fedon's Rebellion in 1795 was a gentleman by the name of Ninian Holm. So he was appointed governor in 1793. He was appointed governor by the British monarch at the time. Uh, so that document uh, that's showing on the screen is not very clear. It's actually the appointment document that states so that uh, Ninian Holm is appointed lieutenant governor of uh, Grenada um, in 1795. He had been living in Grenada since 1762. Uh, so he did not just come to Grenada as governor. He was actually living in Grenada. He was the owner of two estates. He had one estate in Waltham in St. Max and another estate located in Paraclete in St. Andrews. So he was also an estate owner, um, owning two estates in Grenada. So in 1795, when the... Fedon's rebellion broke out. He was captured. He was captured by uh, the forces in Guav, led by Joachim Philip, one of the colleagues of Julian Fedon. He was captured. So one of the earliest moves that Julian Fedon made was to capture the lieutenant governor of Grenada at the time. A very bold move, of course, to to in the beginning of a rebellion to capture the, the leader of the country, although not uncommon though. I mean, it, it definitely was a good move to capture the leader at the time. So um, Joachim Philip and the troops in Guav captured Ninian home, whose um, home was located actually in the parish of St. John's. So that's where he was located. His house and residence was in Guav St. John's. So he was captured by those forces, Fedon's forces in Guav in 1795. It is alleged or believed that he was held as a hostage from March to April 8, 1795 at the Fedon's camp, right? So he was held as a hostage at Fedon's camp for just over a month and then was executed on April 8, 1795. So the execution of the governor, the lieutenant governor of Grenada, uh, Governor Ninian Home in 1795, also contributed to the initial success of the Fedon's Rebellion. So let's take a quick break, a quick commercial break, and then we'll continue with the rest of our Fedon's Rebellion.
And we are back. We are back. So for those who are watching the program again, this is just a plug to follow us on Facebook at Island Learning Grenada. You can like our Facebook page. You can also hit the follow button on our Facebook page. If you are watching via YouTube, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada, to stay updated to all our content posted on our YouTube channel. So let's continue looking at uh, the Fedon's Rebellion. So what really led to the demise of the rebellion? So the rebellion kicked off awesome start March 3rd, 1795, uh, but it did not last. The rebellion did not last. And on June 19th, 1796, the rebellion came to an unfortunate end and uh, dissipated or uh, ended. So what's really contributed to the demise of the Fedon's Rebellion? So one of the reasons for the demise of the Fedon's Rebellion was the fall of strongholds. As I mentioned, initially the British, they were very weak. They did not have a large number of forces on island and many of the troops suffered from yellow fever, but that did not last. Over the months and definitely beginning from March 1796, reinforcements came from Britain itself as well as other neighboring British colonies in the Caribbean to support the forces in Grenada under the British uh, forces that were fighting Julian Fedon and his forces. So reinforcements came on island and that strengthened the British forces. Once the reinforcements arrived, they began attacking strongholds um, held by Julian Fedon. And one of those strongholds were located in the parish of St. Andrews, Post Royal, uh, which is a community in uh, today is a community in the parish of St. Andrews. But this was one of uh, Fedon's uh, strongest strongholds um, during the Fedon's rebellion. And the British attacked that stronghold and managed to take control of that stronghold in March 1796. So once strongholds began falling one by one, beginning with Post Royal, and there was another one, Piton Hill, um, was another stronghold that was taken. That began to weaken um, Julian Fedon's efforts under the Fedon's Rebellion. And that would, would be one of the factors that contributed to the eventual demise of Fedon's Rebellion. So the end, the end of the rebellion, the rebellion ended in June 1796, just about one year and three months after he had started. So the, rebel, the rebellion, sorry, ended a very unfortunate, very bloody end. So the, the, the final attack that the British troops made, now they were, you know, a revamped forces, um, they attacked, um, Fed on camp. Fed on camp, as I said, was the location or the camp of Julian Fedon. This was his station point for food, ammunition, and where many of the troops were camping, including the slaves, including the whites, including the free mulattoes who were fighting with Julian Fedon. So the last moves that the British forces made was to attack Fed on camp. It was a bloody end to the Fedon's rebellion many 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 slaves died uh, on that last attack at Fedon's camp when the British troops attacked uh, Fedon's camp and basically uh, killed those who were there um, mercilessly. Uh, Julian Fedon himself managed to escape so he escaped from um, Fedon's camp and he has never been found. His body has never been found. There has been stories about, oh, he escaped and, and took a boat and went to Trinidad and later would have died in Trinidad. 
others said he escaped and, and took a boat and went to Martinique uh, because that was where he was uh, believed to have been born in, in Martinique um, before his parents moved to Grenada. So it is believed that he took a boat and he uh, he went to Martinique and later would have died in Martinique, you know, just with the normal age and so forth um, died, but he would have escaped the Fedans Rebellion. Others believe that he, he died um, during the rebellion itself. He succumbed um, to the troops and he was killed as, as part of the attack of uh, 1796 when the attack was made on Fedon's camp. So there are three possible theories still circulating today in terms of what became of Julian Fedon. Right, so that is still a, a piece of the story that needs to be um figured out and 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 told whether or not in years to come archaeology to be able to discover the bones of Julian Fedon. Maybe that is a possibility still with the you know each year the science of archaeology is in improving. That is a possibility if indeed he did succumb. Um to the attack um, at Fedon's camp, then his remains are somewhere probably in the Fedon's camp region. And that would require some archaeology mission to be able to discover those. So that's, that was the end. The end of the, of the Fedon's rebellion was on June 19, 1796, with an attack made on Fedon's camp in which... Um, the troops fed on troops, which were the slaves and the free mulattoes and the whites who were fighting. Many of them were killed, and that ended the Fedon's Rebellion. And lastly, the Fedon's Rebellion, the impact of the rebellion. So Julian Fedon, his vision was that he wanted to create an independent Black Republic um, in which persons of both French and British origin or citizenship would be able to live in Grenada and have equal rights. That was his vision, similar to what Toussaint Louverture would do a few years later on with the Haitian Revolution in Haiti. Unfortunately, the Fedans Rebellion did not succeed and it did not result in the end being a a, 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 a drive or a, the mission wasn't achieved. The mission of creating that free, independent black, black republic uh, for Grenada was not achieved. We would have to wait until uh, 1974 to become an independent nation um, away from British rule. Um, but the Fedans Rebellion um, was not successful. The impact of the rebellion, um, it had a devastating impact on the economy of Grenada at the time in 1796, mainly because during that year period and leading up to the end of the rebellion, there was just so many destruction of coffee and cocoa estates on island. So it really depleted um, agriculture and farming and uh, that sector in Grenada. So 65 sugar estates were destroyed. Many of them were burnt to the ground. Um, and that was part of the fighting um, between the Julian Fredon's troops and the British troops. So it is believed 65 sugar estates and 35 cocoa coffee, not cocoa, 35 coffee estates because sugar and coffee were the two main um, estates at the time and cotton to a bit, but cotton more in, on the sister isles of Carrick, who are pretty matnik. So 65 sugar estates and 35 coffee estates were destroyed um, during the rebellion. So it definitely devastated a lot the agriculture sector of Grenada and it's estimated about 7,000 7,000 slaves died during the, the rebellion. The 
cost figure of damage is estimated to be 2.5 billion sterling pounds. That's what was the figure that was given in 1795 that the total sum of damage was 2.5 million sterling pounds. The sterling pound at the time was the currency because we were a British colony, so we had the, the pound was the currency used at the time. So that was the estimate of the damage or the impact of the Fedon's rebellion. So it will take, um, many of the sugar estates were, did not come back after the Fedon's rebellion. They were destroyed and they, they no longer existed. Um, same as the coffee estates. In fact, the coffee or the growing of coffee demised significantly after the 1795 period. Um, as a result of the impact of the Fedon's rebellion. So that's our um, program um, today in terms of the learning shared on um, Fedon's rebellion. We're going to take a quick break and then wrap up. Uh, so let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back. So thank you for viewing our program today. Our topic today was uh, Fedon's Rebellion, continuing from last week where we looked at uh, Julian Fedon, who was the um, leader of the Fedon's Rebellion. Um, so we focused today on some of the Fedon's camp. Again, if you are interested in seeing the actual uh, site itself, you can take a hike up past Mount Kwa Kwa and find um, Fed on Scamp as a, as a group activity, a Saturday activity, um, and also some of the initial success and the, the demise of the Fed on Rebellion. So that's what our program focused on today. So thank you for viewing our program. Those who tuned in for the very first time, it was great uh, having you as part of our audience. Do ensure that you like our Facebook page, Island Learning Grenada, and you also follow our Facebook page if you want to stay updated and in tune to all of the content that we post on our Facebook page. We'll be back next week for the final episode of Season 4 of Island Learning Grenada Live Sundays. Uh, so next week would be our final episode of this season. And then we'll take a break and then be back sometime in the, in the months ahead with season five. Uh, we definitely know the carnival activities is picking up. The launch is happening on, uh, in April, the launch of Spice Mask by the Spice Mask Corporation. There is also a special launch for the Diaspora on may 7th um a special launch of spice mass targeted towards the diaspora so look forward to that as we get ramping up getting ready for a bumper spice mass 2023 uh jet blue has added an additional flight um beginning um in august i believe august 5th uh, to September. So if you are still looking to book your flight to come down to Grenada to experience Spice Mask, check out 